everyone. So you made it to episode seven where we're finally gonna get into an actual VTuber workflow. So we're gonna be running through how to get that Vroid character that we created in episode six up and running in both Unity and Unreal. And a few things to mention before we get started. Number one is that this workflow does cost uh, some money. You're actually gonna have to purchase a plugin. It's just about $9 USD, so it's not that bad, but there will need to be a purchase to get this all working. The other thing to note is that for the Unreal workflow, you're still going to need to use Unity in order to prepare the model. Essentially, that plugin that we're going to purchase, HANA Tools, is what we're going to use to add the 52 blend shapes to our character's face so that we can drive the facial motion capture. We will update this course if we find a better workflow, but with all that said, let's get into it. Before we get started, a huge shout out to our Gamma Witch and Faux Famit on YouTube. We used a lot of their tutorials to come up with this workflow, and you should definitely go check out their channels if you're interested in VTubing tutorials. We'll need two plugins for this process. The first is called UniVRM. You can find a link to the GitHub page in the description below and in the resource doc. Here is the ever confusing GitHub page, and to download the package, we'll go to Releases, and download this package. I've gone ahead and just placed it on the desktop for now. The second plugin we'll need is that HANA tool. The link to this marketplace page is on Booth PM and it's in the description below. The plugin costs about a thousand yen or nine dollars USD and after you've purchased you'll be able to download a dot zip with the tool. If we open up the zip, we want to grab the package with the VRM in the title. I'll go ahead and put that on the desktop too. And now we can open up Unity. So we'll create a new project. I'm working in 2020.3. And I'll call it Vroid Convert. So first we're going to drag in our plugin packages and I'll start with UniVRM. We'll import all. And then when we get this warning, we'll just hit accept all. Next we'll drag in the HANA tool. And you know everything has gone right if at the end you can see these three drop downs. So now we're actually going to import the Vroid or .vrm model that we created in episode 6. Go to VRM0, import, and then select our avatar. Afterwards, it will ask you where to save the prefab file, which I usually just do in the default location. After some thinking, we will have our model imported. So if we drag our character into the scene and check out the face, we do have blend shapes here, but they aren't the proper 52 AR kit blend shapes. So to create those, I need to have my avatar in the scene like this. Then I'll go and open up the HANA tool reader. I'll drag in the face of the avatar, and then I'll select which model she is. If you recall, we were using Vroid Studio 0.14.0, and she's a female, so that's what we'll select. Then we'll hit Read Blend Shapes and OK the pop-up. So we can close out the reader, and then we'll open up HANA Tools Clip Builder. This time, we'll drag the entire avatar into the field and make sure Vroid is selected, and then hit Clip Build. After that's all done, if we go back to the face and check those blend shapes, there we go, we have the 52 AR kit blend shapes now added to our model. Now, perhaps if we were working in Unity, we could just stop here and start working with our mocap with the model, but I think it's cleaner to export out this model from Unity so you have a completely clean avatar that has the 52 blend shapes added. To do this, we'll go to VRM0, export, We'll drag in our avatar, make sure everything is correct, and then hit export. 
So I'm going to save it next to the original, but I'll add AR kit to the end so I know this model is the one with our blend shapes. Now we have a model we can use in either Unreal or Unity, or we could even import it into other programs like Blender, and it will have those 52 blend shapes. Okay, so now that the model is prepped, let's go through the workflow for using your Rococo mocap with this avatar in Unity. We're going to start a whole new project and go through it from scratch using the model we just created. First thing we need to do is go and grab the Rococo mocap plugin from our GitHub page. The link is in the description below, and on the page we'll go to the newest plugin release and download the Rococo Studio Live Unity package. I'm going to put it on the desktop, and then I'll open up Unity and start a new project. Once we're in Unity, we'll drag in our Rococo Live plugin package. Import all. And then we'll drag in our Uni VRM plugin, which we're going to need to bring our avatar back into Unity. Next, we'll go and drag in the avatar we just created. Remember, the avatar with AR kit in the name is the one with our blend shapes. We have to drag in our avatar after we've loaded the Uni VRM package for it to import properly. Next, we're going to go to our Rococo folder. We'll go to Scenes, and then we'll open up the Plugin Example scene. We can go ahead and delete these three avatars under Custom Inputs. And then we're going to add our Vroid avatar to the scene under Custom Inputs. So because we've already prepped this avatar, it's going to be really easy to get our mocap up and running. We'll select our avatar, you can collapse all these windows, and then I'm going to add an actor component. This is the component from the Rococo plugin package. I'm going to change the profile name to the same actor profile I'm using in Rococo Studio, in this case it's Sam, and then under face I'll hit create. Again, because we've added the AR kit blend shapes, this model is now ready to go. Now we'll jump into Rococo Studio and actually port in our mocap. Okay, so here we are in Rococo Studio. I've already gotten everything up and running. You can check out episode three if you want to see how we set up all this hardware and software. But assuming that you've already got this up and running, all we need to do now is just turn on our live Unity uh, plugin. So we're going to go to Start Live Stream. Enable our Unity plugin. You can see right here that we're streaming out to port 14043. The other thing that we can do is just note that this is that actor profile name, Sam, that we inputted into the component earlier in Unity. And the other thing I can do is just turn on treadmill mode because I'm going to be standing in the same place and this way we'll make sure that we're not translating accidentally. So now if we hop back into Unity, we can do a couple of things. First of all, I'm just going to drag this camera a little bit closer to our character. And I've actually also disconnected or undocked our game tab. But as you can see, if we go into our studio manager, here's that 14043 port number that we have streaming out of Rococo Studio. And if you remember, and we check our avatar here, we use that name Sam. Uh, under the profile name. So now, if we hit play, there we go. Everything is up and running, and we can even trigger calibrations from within Unity. So I can just hit calibrate up here, do my straight pose, and there we go, up and running, everything working great, but we can still make a few changes. You might notice that, for instance, our arms are kind of crowding our avatar. So what if we wanted to just make sure our arms were a little bit out wider by default? So what we can do is stop play mode, and we'll go and find our arms bones. Left and right. And if we go in and select them, we can just rotate them 
Ooh, we want to make sure we're on the right axis here. Rotate them up a little bit into more of a Y pose. And now, if we hit play, our arms are just going to be a little bit wider by default. So that will help with, uh, you know, especially because this is a puffy jacket, we don't want to be crowding the character too much. Um, you know, we can go in and make adjustments to our camera in real time. Super cool. Yeah, and we have everything up and running. Ah, uh, peace. Do our dances, all the spring bones are automatically working. Super great. So what would we do if we wanted to output this to OBS, which we're gonna get into in episode 11? Well, to prepare for that, I'm just gonna create a super basic green screen behind my character. So I'm gonna hit pause, and I'm going to create a pl uh, plane here under 3D object, we'll just create a plane. I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees on the X. You can see it right here. Then I'm just going to create a new material. You can call it green. Change the albedo to something that's appropriately green screeny. And then add it to our plane here. And there we go. A basic green screen. So if we hit play now, you know, and maybe we take our camera in a little bit closer. So as you can see, this is super lag free and it works really well even if we have games open or something else. This is a very lightweight workflow uh, on your computer, which is really great. So that is how you work with a Vroid avatar in Unity. Again, you can download this project file completely for free and use it in any way you want in the description below. Now we're gonna go through how to get this same avatar working in Unreal. We're gonna be working in Unreal 4.26. Now both the Rococo plugin and the VRM plugin we'll be using do have 4.27 versions, but 4.26 is the most stable, so that's what we're gonna be working in. If you do want to work in 4.27 or even try UE5, the link to the GitHub page for the Rococo plugin is in the description below. While the plugins for UE4.27 and UE5 aren't on the marketplace yet, you can find the plugin for UE4.26 on the marketplace. So before we start, you'll want to go and download and install that to the engine. You will also need to go and grab the VRM4U plugin. This will allow us to properly import our Vroid model. The link to this page is in the description below, and you'll just need to go to Releases, and then select the version you're working in. I'll just throw this plugins folder on the desktop for now. Now let's launch 4.26 and start a new project. So the first thing we'll do is add our vrm for u plugin. The easiest way to do this is to navigate to your project folder. I normally just right click on the main level and go to show in Explorer. Then you can add the plugins folder we got from VRM for you to the main level of your project. It should be in the same location as the actual project file. Then we'll jump back into Unreal and activate our Rococo plugin by going to edit plugins and then searching for Rococo. You'll be prompted to restart, and when it opens back up, we'll search for VRM and enable that plugin and restart again. Once Unreal has opened up again, the final thing we'll do is bring our Rococo Assets folder into Unreal. So you can find a link to this folder in the description below, but this folder has a bunch of different bone lists that we'll need to set up our different avatars you'll want to drop this folder into the content folder of your project. And when you do, you'll be able to see it in the content browser. Okay, now it's time to bring in our Vroid model. I'll create a new folder and then drag in the asset. 
Remember, we're using the AR kit version with our blend shapes from Unity. When we do, we'll get a prompt, and you just want to make sure to uncheck this A pose checkbox. We need a T pose for the mocap to translate properly. After everything is imported, we'll go find our avatar skeleton, right click it, and go to Create Anim Blueprint. I'll drag this blueprint into our scene, center it. So now let's go and open up the blueprint. We're going to add a couple of nodes to our blueprint, starting with the Rococo Body Pose node and the Rococo Face Pose node. I'm also going to drop down a VRM Spring Bone node, which you can find by searching for Spring. We still need to do a few things, starting with adding our actor profile name that we're using in Rococo Studio to our nodes. In this case, it's Sam, and I'll point this out again when we get to Rococo Studio. Under Body Pose node, we want to add our Vroid bone list to the bone map override section. This is one of the bone lists that was in that Rococo assets folder we imported earlier. Then we want to select the VRM spring bone and add our Vroid metadata. I usually reduce the gravity a bit, but if you want to tweak the stiffness of the hair, clothes, or anything else, you can do that here. Now we can compile and save. You can ignore these errors, they happen because we leave the bone list fingertip fields blank and they don't matter. So at this point, we can jump into Rococo Studio and actually connect our live mocap. Okay, so this process is going to be kind of similar to what we did in Unity, but essentially, you know, here we are back in Rococo Studio, and now we need to enable our Unreal plugin instead of our Unity pl plugin. So we're going to go to Start Live Stream and turn on Unreal. And as you can see, we're streaming out to port 14045 in this instance. So we're going to turn this off. Again, my actor profile name is Sam, as we already established. Now we'll jump back into Unreal. And the first thing we're going to do in Unreal is we're going to add a Rococo receiver. So this will be available if you have that Rococo plugin enabled. And once you add it into the scene, you can see that we have our port number, which matches 14045, what was just in Rococo Studio. Now, with that added, we can go to Live Link and go to our Rococo Studio source, select Studio, and here we go. You can see both our body and face are here. So because we've already set everything up, essentially all we need to do now is just hit play. So we'll hit play. And as you can see, everything is coming through and working. We've got our face enabled. And it's all looking pretty good. Also super cool that all the spring bones are enabled. And so that's really great. So the other thing is, you know, with this model as well, you can tell that the arms are kind of just crowding the model, right? So the way that we can fix that, we'll stop our session. We'll go open up our blueprint here. And we can add some bone modifier uh, nodes into the, uh, into the blueprint here. So if we search for bone modify, transform modify bone, we're gonna grab that and we're gonna go select our left upper arm, and then we'll copy this, paste it, and with this one, we'll go select our right upper arm. So then if we just wire these guys in here, boop, 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 and hit compile, Everything is working, but what we actually need to do is go and under uh, rotation mode, instead of ignore, go to add to existing. And when you do that and compile, if you select one of these, you basically get an option to, you know, add a transformation to this bone. The other thing that's important is not only that we do add to existing, we work in the bone space. And we'll compile that as well. So I'm gonna go and turn off our live link. There we go, live link turned off just so we get back to that T pose. And now I can just 
tilt these arms up kind of the same way that we did in Unity into that Y pose. And if we compile, turn our live link back on here. And sometimes you just need to add it twice if you don't get both sources, you want both the body and the face. And now when we hit play, there we go. So much better, as you can see, I'm kind of just not crowding my body as much and you can tweak that as much as you might need to, uh, to get the desired result. But yeah, fingers, you know, face, everything working, looking good. So similar to what we did in Unity, I'm basically now just gonna create a plane that is green and add it behind our character. I might also create a, cam a fixed camera just so that I can always go to that uh, for when we're gonna actually be out uh, streaming out to OBS. So I'm gonna go do that now. Stop the session, go to basic. We're gonna create a plane right here. We're gonna scale it way up, rotate it. Then we are going to create a new material here. And under the base color, we just wanna load in a constant three vector, which is basically just a color. And we have this opportunity to uh, select, you know, that color right there. And we'll just go to green and make sure it's, you know, pretty vibrant green. Save that. Boom, add it to our plane. And let's create a camera as well. Or we can create our camera. We'll actually pilot it. We'll turn down the speed a little bit here. Go zoom in on our character. Maybe we will adjust the focus settings. There we go. And now, what we can actually do is make sure that we have, under skeletal mesh for our character, update animation and editor. And that way we can get a better idea of where our camera needs to actually be. So it looks like it's a little bit high. Let's pull it down a little bit. And there we go, if we hit play and we hit eject, what we can actually do is undock this viewport and there we go. Now we have something that we can, you know, port into OBS and essentially key out this green screen in OBS and send that out to our favorite streaming platform. So as you can see, everything is working super well, you know, very lag free. We could also use, uh, you know, the DLSS NVIDIA plugin if we're running an NVIDIA graphics card, which in this case I am. Uh, and you'll also notice because we're in treadmill mode, even if I walk around the room, we're gonna stay in the same place, right? Which can be kind of nice in case you move around. You don't want your character to go out of the camera's you know, view. Spring bones working, everything looking good. And the only other thing we could do is maybe tweak some of those arm transform settings if we wanted to. But other than that, this is looking pretty good. We could also mess with the lights until we got what we wanted. But this is the basic setup for our character. And as you can see, I can also walk around pretty far and you'll still pick up that facial animation. So that is how you get your Vroid character up and running in both Unity and Unreal Engine. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below or visit our Discord to chat about it live with us and with the community. The Unity and Unreal project files are available for free in the description below if you wanna download them and play around with them. 
which you can do without limit. You can use them commercially because Vroid models and Unity and Unreal are all free. In episode 11, we'll walk through how to get our characters with their green screens into OBS and streaming to your favorite platform. In the next episode, we'll go through the workflow for metahumans in Unreal. Join us.